Dear students, in this lecture, we will learn about uh, digestive system in UNU. Last class, we learned about the externals of UNU and its shell structure in detail. So, this class, we will uh, discuss about the digestive system in UNU. I am Dr. Lata, assistant professor, Department of Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. So, let's start with the digestive system in UNU. Now, when we talk about digestive system, it mainly consists of the alimentary canal and the glands which assist in the process of digestion. So, here also with respect to UNU, the digestive system we will study under two main headings. One is we will first learn about the alimentary canal what all parts it contains and what happens in every region of the alimentary canal followed by the digestive glands what are they where are they present and what is its role in the process of digestion so to start with uh, if you look at this diagram which is there on the slide this represents the digestive system in unio so you have to practice this diagram. This comes as a 10 mark question wherein you will be asked to describe the digestive system in UNIO with a neat label diagram. So you are expected to write this neat label diagram and explain all the points that we are going to discuss. So here if you observe this diagram carefully, this actually uh, tells you or this gives you an understanding of how the alimentary canal is present in the union. So it starts with mouth. Okay, now which is the mouth here? This opening, this is the mouth. Then mouth leading to esophagus, which is in the form of a small tube-like structure. And then, so this esophagus is a small tube-like structure here which is marked and that leads into stomach stomach is this portion okay and this stomach leads to intestine so stomach stomach leads to uh, intestine now which is the intestine here this whole tube that is in the form of a coil like this this whole thing is the intestine okay since it is in the form of a coil it's labeled as coils of intestine and then this intestine continues backward like this as rectum and this rectum opens outside through anus so since the digest the alimentary canal in case of unio it starts from mouth and it ends with anus it is called as a complete digestive system okay now in addition to this these are the different parts of the alimentary canal one is the mouth the mouth the esophagus stomach uh, intestine rectum and anus so we will be studying each part of this and we will learn like what is the significance what is the structure and what role it plays in the process of digestion in addition to this you find two additional structures one is this labial palps now where do you find these labial palps on either side of the mouth here right and uh, these are the ones which assist in pushing the foot towards the mouth so we will learn that in detail so this diagram you have to practice and i hope you got an idea of the uh, positioning of the alimentary canal in case of um, unio now we will learn each part of the alimentary canal in detail and one more thing where do you find digestive gland here can you uh, locate the digestive gland which is labeled here now this is the digestive gland that is present around the stomach like this okay that is the position of the digestive gland keep that in your mind it starts from mouth with this is the mouth that leads to a tube like esophagus then comes the stomach stomach leads to coiled intestine 
then intestine continues backward as rectum and that opens out to anus okay let's start now now the first part of the alimentary canal is the mouth so mouth where do you find the mouth what is its exact position that is present below the anterior adductor muscle I hope you remember the position of anterior adductor muscle it is also shown in the diagram so this and below the anterior adductor muscle you find a transverse slit transverse slit means it, it, it is not round it is like this a transverse slit okay so mouth is of that shape and it is present below the anterior adductor muscle and on each side of the mouth there are two ciliated triangular flap i hope you understand what are flaps like you can make out these um, uh, palps the labial palps which are the flap like structures and they are called as labial palps now these labial palps they are in pairs present on both sides of the mouth the external pulp unite in front of the mouth to form the upper lip whereas the internal pulps unite behind the mouth to form the lower lip so these two labial pulps they enclose a ciliated groove okay that means a passage which is lined by cilia like this now you will know the significance of it when we learn uh, about the process of digestion so here what uh, what did we learn we learned about the mouth where is it present it is present below the anterior adductor muscle and it is present in the form of a transverse slit and on either side of this slit you find two ciliated triangular flaps which are called as labial pulps so these labial pulps the external pulps unite in front of the mouth to form an upper lip and the internal pulp unite behind the mouth to form a lower lip so the upper lip and the lower lip are formed by the fusion of this margins of the labial pulps so these two labial pulps they enclose a ciliated oral groove ciliated because it is lined by cilia oral groove oral means it mouth so this ciliated groove leads to mouth so it is named as ciliated oral groove and one more thing to be noted here you must have learned in general characters that radula is a characteristic feature of mollusk which is a um, you know the uh, teeth like structures the rasping organ which is a characteristic of mollusk which is absent in case of unio okay so i hope you are clear with this the next uh, region of the alimentary canal is esophagus now how was the esophagus it was like a short tube so it's just a plain thin short tube that runs dorsally from the mouth and it opens into the stomach and the inner wall of this esophagus is also ciliated that is it is lined by cilia so esophagus is very simple mouth mouth surrounded by labial pulps and mouth leads to esophagus esophagus is a very short tube that leads into stomach now when you talk about stomach stomach was pretty large you know large compared to the other structures so it's a large oval sac which is embedded in the digestive gland we saw right the stomach was surrounded by digestive gland and this inner epithelium of the stomach it is thrown into number of folds the dorsal part of which uh, means the esophagus which opens into the stomach that region is called as the dorsal part of the stomach and that is thrown into number of folds and then since the digestive gland surrounds the stomach this digestive gland open into the stomach through minute or small uh, narrow ducts through which 
the secretions of the gland is poured into the stomach so the dorsal part of the stomach it receives esophagus and in the ventral part of the stomach you find a very flexible a transparent solid gelatinous rod like structure which is being secreted by the cells of the stomach itself and this flexible rod so this flexible rod um, it plays a very important role and we call this rod as crystalline style okay so what is a crystalline style this is a a flexible transparent solid gelatinous rod like structure which you find on the ventral region of the ventral part of the stomach and this plays an important role in the process of digestion wherein it secretes the carbohydrate splitting kind of enzymes like amylase and glycogenase okay so what happens we said the inner lining of the stomach is ciliated just because it is ciliated that sets in a kind of rotation of this crystalline style okay so once this rod rotates which rod the crystalline style once it is set into a rotatory movement by the action of the cilia the apical or the tip of the crystalline style breaks at times so when it breaks what happens all the enzymes that is secreted by the crystalline style it gets poured into the stomach now what are the enzymes that are secreted by the stomach the amylase and the glycogenase so when these enzymes are poured into the stomach that brings about the digestion of carbohydrates so that have this process of di- this uh, much of digestion happens in the stomach now the next region is the intestine now intestine is also a narrow tube and if you observe the diagram i hope you can make out the presence of digestive gland and the stomach and the from the stomach the ventral portion of it gives rise to the intestine and intestine if you observe it is just a narrow tube like structure okay it starts from the ventral portion of the stomach and it extends uh, downwards it extends downwards see if this is the this is the stomach we know this this we described now from the ventral portion of the stomach the intestine it is moving down like this isn't it so it comes down and it coils upon itself it coils around itself see this is one coil and this is the second loop of the intestine so it coils upon itself to form two incomplete loops this is one loop and the other one starts and it is incomplete so it forms two incomplete loops and then and then say so it comes like this it loops around incompletely it comes near then it raises up again it comes close to the stomach and then it moves backwards isn't it first it goes down then it forms a loop like this and once it loops around again it raises up near the stomach it comes and then it takes a back turn okay and uh, once it takes a back turn it enters into the pericardium or the pericardial cavity which in turn covers the heart okay so this union is one such organism wherein a part of the digestive system enters through the heart and then comes out okay so this intestine enters into the pericardial cavity into the pericardium and then it takes a actually it pierces through the ventricle one of the uh, chamber of the heart it pierces through the ventricle and then it comes out as rectum and opens out into anus we'll come back to this so till intestine you understood from the ventral portion of the stomach it comes down and then it loops around 
itself and then it forms two incomplete loops again it ascends top towards the stomach and then it takes a back turn going through the pericardium it pierces through the ventricle of the heart and then it comes out as rectum now rectum once the intestine pierces the pericardial cavity or the pericardium then it is called as rectum and that runs parallel to the dorsal surface of the muscle and it opens out through the anus above the excellent uh, excurrent or the excellent siphon now this inner wall of the rectum here if you see the inner wall of this rectum this is thrown into number of folds like this okay and that gives rise to a longitudinal folds in the form of a ridge which we call it as tiflozole now what why this rectum has this kind of folds that increases the area of absorption okay so uh, this rectum it opens outside through anus and that opens above the posterior adductor muscle what was the position of the mouth it was present below the anterior adductor muscle whereas the rectum it comes over the posterior adductor muscle and opens in, uh, opens as anus and uh, that whatever uh, undigested food it is thrown through the anus it is released into the excurrent siphon and here the excurrent siphon <coughs> it acts as a cloaca why because we said um, uh, through the excurrent siphon the undigested food material or the digestive waste which is released through the anus is thrown through excurrent siphon and also the gametes which are formed in union they also are released through the same opening so the opening through which both the opening which is common for both <coughs> excretory waste and the uh reproductive gametes that we call it as cloaca so here you can refer the excellent siphon uh of unio as its cloaca now coming to the digestive glands so in some textbook uh, some refer these digestive gland like since it works like liver they call this digestive gland as liver and in some textbook they call it as hepatopancreas so most of them refer it as hepatopancreas so commonly we can call it as digestive glands so they are um, a pair of irregular light gray kind of structures which are found around the stomach and the secretion of this is discharged into the stomach through small ducts and each gland it is made up of number of diverticula through which it pours the secretion into the stomach and it brings about the process of digestion now the next question is now we learned how the alimentary canal is positioned and what is its what are the different uh, regions of this uh, alimentary canal and we learned the position of the digestive gland and we said it acts as a liver and that helps in or that brings about the process of digestion in the stomach now the next question is what does this unio feed on and from where do the food comes from okay so we said that unio is a filter ciliary feeder because cilia plays a very important role in the process of uh, and digestion starting from pushing the food particles towards the mouth or you know trapping this food particles in the mucus then sending that mucus cart towards the mouth the cilia plays a major role in providing uh, this food to unio then this uh, from where do this food comes from the respiratory current which brings in the is the one which brings in the food particles into the mantle cavity while discussing about the morphology we said in unio you find two siphons one is incurrent siphon or inhalant siphon the other one is excurrent siphon 
it is through this inhalant siphon that the water enters into the mantle cavity and that brings in the food the oxygen and uh, gametes also so here it is the respiratory current that brings in food particles into the mantle cavity and the seal the gill filament it contains various kind of cilia which actually plays a major role in processing of the food now for example uh, i'll just give you an outline of how the gill filament look like and when we learn about um, um, the respiratory system in unio we will learn in detail so this is a structure the typical gill filament somewhat looks like this and this shows this shows um different types of cilia on it okay if this is the gill filament now here you see cilia on the lateral side which you call it as lateral cilia and then uh, <clears throat> you have some cilia on the front which is called as frontal cilia and some towards the lateral and towards the front you call them as front lateral frontal cilia so it is made up of chitinous rods and uh, other gelatinous substance here so we will learn that structure in detail later for the time being i'll just tell you how this food get processed now this lateral cilia which is the lateral cilia the cilia which are on towards the side lateral means side the cilia which are on towards the side of the gill filament this causes the food laden current to enter the mantle cavity as the water enters into the mantle cavity these cilia beats and they push those uh, tinier or the smaller food particles in towards the front and then this lateral frontal cilia the cilia which is on the lateral side and towards the front side so they are called as lateral frontal cilia now what does they do they deflect this fine food particles and prevent the entry of larger particles so these lateral cilia push cilia towards the front and this lateral frontal cilia they sieve like they finally they send only the fine food particles ahead and the larger food particles that are there that will be prevented okay that pushes them down to settle down and it pushes only the smaller food particles to move ahead and then this frontal cilia which is there in the front of the gill filament this collect and pass the food particles into food groove now what are these food grooves sorry now what are these food grooves for example if you learn the structure of the gill filament it will be somewhat like this and you have many gill filaments which are like so this groove in between the gill filaments what is called as a food groove and here this frontal cilia that collect and uh, these food particles they get entangled in the mucus secreted by the gills and these small food particles get mixed up with the mucus and they form a a, a string like mass which pass along this food groove okay so then this food uh, string like food particle is passed ahead towards the mouth and as and when it moves along the food groove it is these labial palps you know you remember what are labial palps they are found on either side of the mouth and we said that has a ciliated oral groove now this food which is tangled in the mucus when it comes when it is pushed forward it is these labial palps that takes this food string like masses which contains food towards the mouth okay there also the labial the ciliated groove of this labial palps make sure that no larger particles enter into the mouth so if there are any larger food particles in the mucus string they just you know push them back so that it can get uh, it is thrown away through the excellent siphon 
but only the finer food particles along with the mucus enters into the mouth so that's how the food is uh, brought to the mouth and then when you talk about uh, digestion we know that digestion occurs in two ways one is extracellular and the other one is intracellular isn't it so uh, here in case of unio you find both intracellular and extracellular digestion happening now from uh, the digestive glands which produce enzymes okay and that uh, in uh, digestive glands what happens the cells of this digestive gland they take up the solid particles of food and uh, intracellular digestion of proteins and perhaps the uh, digestion of carbohydrates it takes place by means of intracellular enzymes as we know this is the the crystalline style that is there in the stomach that is the one which uh, uh, you know which forms amylase and glycogenase and they bring in the process of carbohydrate digestion so this is how the intracellular digestion occurs in case of unio by the enzyme secreted by the digestive gland and also by the enzyme secreted by the crystalline style whereas you have some amoeboid wandering kind of leukocytes that ingest food and it also digest it and such kind of digestion is a kind of extracellular digestion that happens so they bring about extracellular digestion and absorption of this digested food mainly takes place in stomach and also um, uh, and in from the uh, digestive gland whereas the undigested waste in the stomach if any they are sent back into the stomach from the digestive gland then it is passed into the intestine then to rectum and anus from anus it is thrown out through the excellent siphon so in intestine and rectum you uh, the you know reabsorption of water from the waste from the undigested food is also been observed so in intestine and rectum you come across the reabsorption of water as well so i hope you uh, understood this concept of digestive system in unio so just to take a recap we studied this process of digestion it's very simple and basic form wherein uh, you um, we studied as the first part as the alimentary canal and the second part as how the, uh, the what is the role of digestive gland and how the process of digestion takes place so we said alimentary canal consists of the mouth the esophagus the stomach intestine rectum and anus and uh, we mouth is around it's a transverse slit and surrounded by two labial palps mouth leads to short tube like esophagus esophagus to stomach stomach is a large sac like structure which is ciliated the inner lining is ciliated and its dorsal part shows the number of folds which receives the pourings from the digestive gland and the uh, ventral part you find a transparent flexible rod like crystalline style which secretes amylase and glycogenase which helps in the carbohydrate digestion and then stomach leads to intestine intestine is in the form of a tube which is coiled upon itself and it comes down forms a loop and then it goes up towards the stomach and take a back turn it continues as rectum in the pericardium it pierces through the ventricle and then uh, uh, it comes out as it comes out and opens out as anus and whatever the uh, waste is been formed that is thrown through the excellent siphon and then we learned like how uh, the process of feeding occurs how the food get processed and then we learned about the digestion absorption and ejection and we said that digestion is both intracellular and extracellular 
and um, how intra and extracellular digestion takes place in unio is what we have learned. So writing diagram is compulsory and you have to give explanation of all this. You can uh, avoid writing about food and feeding mechanism wherein we said about how the food get processed that you can write precisely in a sentence or two but main focus should be there on the alimentary canal. All the parts of the alimentary canal should be mentioned. Digestive gland is important and the process of digestion if you write it is both intra and extracellular that is more than enough. So these are the books from which I have taken the content and here are a few questions for you to answer in Unio mouth what is the position of the mouth I said it's present below the anterior adductor muscle so the answer is A. Now the enzymes secreted by crystalline style are amylase and glycogenase. So the answer here is C. Then a part of alimentary canal that pierces through the heart of unio is, is it intestine, stomach, esophagus or rectum? It is the rectum. So the answer is D. Then the longitudinal folds formed inside the rectum is known as tiflozole. So the answer is A. Then digestion in unio is, is it intracellular, extracellular, both or none? What is the answer? The correct answer here is both, that is you have to choose C because it occurs both by intracellular and extracellular digestion. So if you choose any one, if you choose A or B, your answer will be wrong because there is one more option which says both. That means your answer should be answer C. So I hope you have made this concept clear to you. If you have any doubts, you can uh, email it to me in this in my email id vilatadamodaran at gmail.com and I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you for listening.